What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on for automating the creation of signage in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so GeoSign is a brand new add-on for creating neon signage in Blender. You can see how it's one of the most popular items in the Blender market this week, which is partially why I wanted to cover it. But basically what it is, is it's a tool that will use text and help you generate your own signs really quickly. Um, if you check it out between 812 and 820, you can use this discount code to get 30% off of the add-on. But basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a tool for creating and um, it basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a tool for creating um, complex and lit signage inside of Blender. It also has the ability to use uh, images and animated GIFs in order to um, create animated signs in Blender as well. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way this works. Okay, so the first thing is you want to make sure that you go into your preferences under add-ons and you want to make sure that you install the GeoSign zip file that comes along with this add-on. So it's really simple to do. You just install the zip file. And then once you do that, and you may want to restart Blender after you do that, just to make sure all of the icons and stuff show up in here. But after you do that, now over on the in panel, so if you tap the in letter key and you pop this out, you can use this in order to um, generate different kinds of signs. Now note that it comes with a couple different libraries. So it comes with the main asset library, which is going to allow you to generate your own sign as well as do that import of images or GIFs. So it's also got these text asset libraries which you can use in order to create random signs which we can take a look at in a minute and a materials library which basically contains the materials that you're going to be able to use for your signage. Um, so one thing you may want to note is there's also a documentation page which I will link to in the notes down below that kind of walks you through how to use this in here. So um, if you want to check that out, you can definitely do that. When you click into this and you scroll down, there are a couple videos in here that you can watch on YouTube that are going to show you how to use some of the different tools, other things like that. So um, for now though, let's go ahead and let's create a sign. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to move Bonnie out of the way and then I'm going to click in here. I'm going to go to the main asset library and I'm going to import the GeoSign asset. That's just going to create a blank asset right here. And I think we're gonna want Bonnie over here, actually. Um, but that's gonna create this blank asset. So far, nothing really interesting, right? It's just kind of generated this uh, panel. But what we wanna do is we wanna use this option for the text tool in order to generate some text. And so when you first click on the text tool, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna bring in a text object, right? So um, this, this is just a piece of text. You can hit the tab key to go into edit mode. You can type in whatever you want. Right, so we're gonna type in Bonnie right here. So now what we've done is we've created a piece of text in here. Now, um, you would think that the next step that you wanna take is to use that text on your sign, but there's actually one more step you wanna take first. So notice how that text object gets created. Well, if we were to go over to our sign and click on the button to use text, it's going to tell us to use the text tool to create a text asset. So what that means is that means you just have to select this object, click on the option for text, tool. And when you do that, it's going to take your text object and it's going to basically create a curve over here with your text. Now note that this is not live, right? So if I come in here and I make a change, right? So if I was to just type in Blender right here and tab out of that, notice how that text did not change, right? So it creates, this is kind of a curve object in here and it's going to use the curve object to create your sign. But Next step is you wanna come over here to your signage object and you just wanna click on the option for use text. And so when you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to use your text assets folder that this created in order to basically use the curves that are over here to generate your text. And so notice how it's using both the curves as well as the flat pieces in here in order to generate this sign. Now, if you were to come in here and adjust this, like this, notice how it's going to adjust the way that that curve is used on your sign. So it's basically using that curve object live in order to generate your signage. But then once you've generated your signage, what you can do with this is you can actually go down and make some adjustments to the sign itself. 
So first off, you can do a random seed, right? And what the random seed is going to do in this case is it's going to randomize things like the cables on the back, other things like that. But there's also options in here under the geo node control that you can use in order to adjust other things. So you can use this to adjust the scale of your sign. So you can make it bigger or smaller using the geo node control. You can also flip the direction of the sign and you could invert it as well using these options right here. Um, and you can scroll down and you can adjust things like the height of the bracket, the depth of the bracket, other things like that, right? So you can use this to kind of adjust that a little bit. You could also adjust how many brackets there are in here. So just a, just a fair amount of things in here that you can adjust. And then as you scroll down, there's other things that you can control as well. Like for example, you can adjust, um, you can toggle the backplate type. So if you toggle the backplate type, um, so when you click on this, it's going to toggle it either from rectangular to kind of like following along with your signage, just depending on what you're trying to do right here. So we've also got the ability to do neon with this sign. And there's really two options in here for that. So when you jump over into Eevee, right, um, it's not very good, right? It doesn't really show up very much. That's not because the add-on is doing anything wrong. That's because we need to turn on a setting. So first off, let me jump into cycles. So if you toggle into cycles, notice how this is actually emitting the light and actually like calculating where the light goes, other things like that, in order to give you kind of a realistic rendering. However, Eevee handles emissive light a little bit differently. So if you jump over into Eevee, it doesn't really calculate emission of light based on neons or e emissive materials or anything like that in the same way. But what you can do is if you go into your render settings under Eevee and you toggle bloom, on, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the light in here to kind of like simulate a brightness around emissive materials. All right, so what we wanna do, right, is we actually don't wanna do this in the neon sign control. The neon sign control is just gonna give us the ability to toggle the light, toggle the light type, other things like that. But if we scroll down into the section for materials, right, and we toggle material control on, in this case, this has the neon one material applied to it. Well, you can scroll down into the neon one settings and you can adjust things like the strength of that neon light like this. You can also adjust the seed, which is going to um, just kind of change the lighting a little bit. It's not actually making a massive change to me, um, but you can definitely play with that. You can also adjust the width of the glow, but then the cool one is the glitch. And so what we want to do is we want to toggle that glitch animation to one, and you just want to bring the glitch in the middle somewhere. Don't do it all the way because then it's just going to be off. But if you bring it down to something in the middle and then click on play, notice what this is going to do is this is going to animate that glitch. So you can use this in order to animate this flashing a little bit, just like this. Now I'm not sure if I bring that glitch down. Yeah, so if you adjust the glitch down like this, you can adjust kind of the speed of the glitch animation that's in here a little bit. So notice how this is going to animate a little bit slower, just like this. You can also adjust things like the color, right? So if I change this to like blue or something like that, notice how it's changing the color of the animation. And so you can use that in order to adjust your um, neon light material. And notice how I can toggle this to more of like an individual lights piece if I decide that I wanna do that. There are some other things in here like giving you the ability to adjust the cables, right? And the variation in the length, other things like that, using this as well. So you can also adjust how much cross bracing is included in here and kind of like how far out that hangs, other things like that. So generating this is really easy. You can also toggle your different materials in here. And I'm not sure if these are random materials or what's driving the material right here. If I leave it on one, then it seems to be working with whatever material I have selected down below. All right, so say you wanna import an image as a sign, you can go into the import image GIF um, video screen. You can click on import assets 
and you can just double click on the image that you want to bring in. Now what that's going to do is that's going to bring in your image and it's going to apply a shader to it to kind of make it look like a screen, right? So I've got this image of Bonnie right here. Um, if I was to bring this in, what you need to do is you need to jump over your sign object and scroll down. And in this case, what we want to make sure that we do is we want to make sure that we actually select the option for curve or mesh. And so when we do that, we can then select a mesh object. So I can use the eyedropper right here and it's going to basically select that image and it's going to generate a sign using that image right here. Now there are some things with that sign shader that you can kind of mess around with. Um, so if I was to select my sign, for example, and then look at this, notice how it has the screen shader in here and you can adjust different things about that um, if you decide that you want to do that. Um, I they, they do animate a little bit and you can adjust some things with like the speed of the animation, other things like that. If you want to make it look like the screen is like slowly updating or flashing or whatever, um, but that's how you would bring in an image and create a sign. And again, you've got kind of the same settings in here. So if I scroll down to like my cross bracing, for example, notice how that cross bracing is still going to get generated with my sign right here. So um, it makes creating those signs really easy. And then we've also got the option within our uh, sign text assets library to bring in assets um, in order to place on our sign itself. So what we can do with our sign selected is we can just import the assets right here. And notice how if we click on our sign, then we can use a random seed in order to randomly generate signs based on those assets. And so notice that basically brings in all of those assets to your Blender file right here. So if I toggle one of them on, you can see it. So if I toggle one of them on, you can see it right here, right? It's got just a bunch of text assets that it imports into your scene. Um, and then it links to this collection. And then when you do the random seed, it's going to randomly pull things out of that collection. So you could also do that with the other assets. So like the Japan sign assets pack, for example, we can click on the import assets. And one thing I'm going to double check really quick and you can see what it's doing is it's linking to the curves in that collection. So in this case, right, the Japan assets are in the JP asset collection that it brings in. But then you can do the random seed in here and it'll randomly pull curve objects based on that. So you could also, I think, do a shift D to duplicate, do a random seed on additional signs, one after the other like this you could come down and you could adjust the neon light materials in each one of these as well so that they're all kind of different. And so there is a setting in here that I haven't really had a chance to play around with yet, um, but there's the ability to use experimental options to create neon sign backplates. And so that basically allows you to kind of like draw in your own backplates um, and then use those to kind of add detail to your object, right? So you can see how he kind of adds a backplate in here and then he adds the materials. But then when he's done, it gives you the ability to create these kind of like custom backplates in here. So um, you're just gonna wanna go to the using experimental options on the documentation in order to see how to do that. Um, I haven't tested it out yet, but it does look pretty cool. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. Um, for me, it seems to be a pretty smooth way of really quickly generating signage, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.